whenever I have a struggle at this point, it's, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it because I'm like, wow, I can't wait to sing this song in a year and see how it feels differently yeah. and reflect back right. on it. I love that one of your favorite singers is, is Sarah Vaughn. I, you know, I'm from the Philippines, and I didn't hear that kind of stuff. What we heard was pop on the radio. Mm -hmm. And it didn't take me until probably my 30s to catch up with her. And then last year, I discovered a video of her in our public library in wow. Williamsburg of one of her first concerts in, um, I think it was Amsterdam or something like that, mm -hmm. where it's just a close-up of her mm -hmm. singing with her band. There's no big movements, uh, you know. And you could just see um, the physicality of how she sang, like where she held her tongue. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if she was um, aware of all that, but it certainly informed. You could just see how she knew all the muscles in her face, in mm -hmm. her mouth, in her throat. Yeah. And that was all informing how those vowels were coming out and how she did all that incredible stuff, which you can't even really describe uh, in words, you just have to hear it. But yeah. do you have that? Did you develop that, or did that come to you naturally, knowing the physicality of the placement of of everything? I mean, just the tongue itself. Yeah, I'd say I'd say it happened. I mean, both. I developed it um, in an organic fashion, in the sense that I I didn't um, really learn that from a teacher or okay. from from technique. But um, you know, when you especially when you sing jazz and so much of it is about personal expression, one of the things you start exploring is um, the, the various sounds that uh, a voice can make. Right. Um, you really detach it from song a lot of times and from lyrics and you just focus on sounds, you know, um, which I think is really, really useful. Um, and you sort of create, in a sense, you kind of start creating a, a mental catalog of the different things that you can do, and then you can build upon that. Like, um, I mean, it's hard to think about. It's like it's only inside my crazy brain. But <laughs> I, I mean, it's almost like when I sing a song, I can like flip through a catalog and be like, uh, I know that this sound will be good for you know this part of the song or this emotion, um, and that sort of thing. And uh, uh, I mean, that's sort of how I, th I thought about it. It's certainly not actually organized in any right. way. Like, I couldn't write it down. I, couldn't, I can't actually really speak about it um, in uh, any certain words, but that's kind of what it's like. Well, so essentially what you're saying is when you're singing, you have a kind of mindfulness so that you, you can reference back to what you did before, how it felt, yeah. and then put it into the future. In other words, you don't just lose your mind and do a performance and go, God, that felt great. Yeah. You have a reference system somewhere inside your brain that keeps track of it that you can uh, dip into to go to that joy Yeah. with the um, expertise that, that you've got. Yeah. So what, would, what have you learned actually from teachers? Is, uh, um, the, uh, I had uh, voice teachers growing up, but I didn't like any of them. Um, I, yeah. I just, for some reason, I didn't take to any of them. So my, my father was my teacher, and I learned a lot from him. Um, he probably taught me the most about pitch and about performing and rhythm. Um, and he gave me just a lot of uh, sort of subtle tools, you know. I mean, he didn't really, he never sat me down and gave me a lesson. He would just be like, oh, you're singing that song, let's, let's play it. Um, and he'd play it with me and... I mean, he just guided me. I can't really like even say, mm -hmm. you know, very specifically. Um, yeah, I can't even remember like specific things he might have taught me. It was just, it was a lot of guiding um, and and a lot of encouragement, mm -hmm. which is huge. Mm -hmm. um, but my voice teacher in college um, taught me a lot of technique, and I'd gotten to the point where I'd sort of listened to a lot of music, and I had a lot of different sounds, and and I, you know, I was young, and so and I had a somewhat immature um, you know, grasp on my own sound. And what she did was sort of strip a lot of stuff away from me. She, okay. she sort of went in there and said, okay, I see you have all of these things. Now, what do you, what do you want to sound like? What do you, you know, what's your sound? And she, I mean, she took away a lot of just like physical things that I did, singing to sort of sound like Ella Fitzgerald or sound like Sarah Vaughan, um, and kind of took them away. Um, and then, but she was always supporting it with technique, so there was always something there. Yeah. 
uh, every time. She wouldn't take it away and be like, I don't know how to sing. She would be like, well, here's the technique. There's your voice. There's what, there's what you actually sound like. So the bag of tricks was sort of sized down. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, you spoke yesterday about uh, listening a lot to Mariah Carey and mm -hmm. also the miseducation of uh, Lauren Hill. Yep. So you, there you've got that, and then you've got Ella Fisher and Sarah Vaughan. Yeah. I don't know if there's a whole co lot of commonality other than technique because they're expressing different things, but yeah. how do you find your voice out of all that? Because, yes, bag of tricks, but, you know, it, my impression is that a lot of the kids who grew up hearing Mariah Carey first mm -hmm. think that those affectations are the way you're supposed to sing. Sure. And so they don't have the arsenal of choices. Yeah. Which, in taking away your bag of tricks, at least you knew you had all these choices. Right. And now you could start to sculpt from this thing. Yeah. Right? So how, how do you get to your voice now from having the gamut of those styles? Like, I mean, I, to me, Mariah Carey serves like a trapeze artist in yeah. a lot of ways. Yeah, she's a mess. <laughs> she's like twisting and she's a mess, squirming. Sure. She's a mess. <laughs> yeah. So how do you find your voice out of all that in which... All of it informs your singing in, in Lake Street Dive, clearly, but it's a different material, um, style of material. I mean, at this point, it's kind of like I open my mouth and see what comes out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, I try and, and uh, not think about those things any okay. longer. Yeah, there you go. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know... I was a sponge for so long, and I still feel like a sponge, but um, I'm not... At this point, I'm really just trying to open my mouth in it for it to sound like me um, and no one else. Um, yeah, that's... that's. Yeah, I, I don't think too much about it. You know, it's like... Uh, I don't think about a specific singer now when okay. I go into singing a certain song. Like, I, I, I used to do that, and I think that that was helpful for a while, but... Um, you know, especially once I started uh, singing with Lake Street Dive, like I didn't have any reference for those songs because I was the first person who sang them because um, we play all original music. Yeah. And um, it was, I mean, I can't say how, you know, awesome that was to have that, you know, clean plate to say like, here's the song. And like no one in particular was, you know, no one was interpreting them for me before right, I heard them. Right, yes. So it'd be like, here's yeah. the song. And, and uh, the band, you know, and we all developed the song around how we thought it should be played and the sound from there. Um, and like, you know, that taught me so much about, um, you know, what my actual sound is. Mm -hmm. Because I would just sing the song and be like, oh, that's how I sing it. Cool. Right. And, then I'd go, right. and then I'd go from there. So it, we're kind of saying that you had been through enough of a process to then let go and go into something original. Yeah. Let's say original or new or... But the process to me seems to me to be of utmost importance. Absolutely, yeah. Right? That Absolutely. you have a foundation yeah. upon which you can draw almost without thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, all that work coming into play and all that obsession with singing songs over and over again. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, yeah, I mean, the process still is still there, and like yeah. there, are, there are definitely types of singing and singers that I have started listening to in order to be able to sing some of the songs in Lake Street Dive. Like, I never listened to any rock singers, and then they would bring in rock songs, and, okay. I, would, and I would sing it, and I would be like, well, this sounds like a jazz singer trying to sing a rock song, and so I would have to sort of, um, you know, figure out uh, new tricks mm -hmm. um, in order to do it, but I, I'm glad that it happened later because I didn't, uh, I was no longer in the, in the frame of mind where I had to mimic a singer in order to be able to produce what they were doing. I could listen to be like, okay, I get it. Like, I get why, mm -hmm. like, you would do that sort of growl there. Like, I, I understand how to do that sound, and then I would alter it to, mm -hmm. I would sort of think about how I would do it, mm -hmm. do the same thing. Does that make sense? That's It's totally like, you know, practical. synonyms. It's like yeah. finding a synonym for yeah. a word. You're like, okay, that's your word. Well, yeah. this is my word. It means yeah, the yeah. same thing. There you go. Clearly, you know the, the impact you have on people when you sing, which is, well, I, let me just say, for me, it was profound. When I was, the first time I saw you with your band, it was in Boston at a club. I needed a ride home from, em, from Boston with Emily, and she said, oh, well, just come to the gig. I've been talking about this band. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> 
I've heard a lot of bands and a lot of singers, but there is really something here. And it went through my body and it, you know, the, my, my DNA just started to jiggle. You know? <laughs> um, so I'm sure that you know you have that effect, but do you, is there like a seminal moment in which you realized even when you were li really young, oh, something is happening here, people, uh, something really good is happening, or is it of a piece with your, the joy and the unity uh, through singing, uh, you know, within the Baha'i experience? I would say more the latter. I mean, I think I've always um, been somewhat aware uh, of the power of music and mm -hmm. uh, of what it has. And I think that, um, that uh, I've always been pretty aware that if you do it sincerely and authentically, then that comes across. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always, I always tell singers that it's, it's really not about technique, it's helpful. Um, it's really not about having a pristine instrument. That can also be helpful, but you can hear someone with a lot of technique and a beautiful sounding instrument and it can leave you cold. Yeah. Um, I see it all the time with singers. Um, and, you can, and you can see a singer that has, you know, neither of those things. And it can, and it can cut you right to the core and I always try and remember that. Mm -hmm. I remember it, you know, on nights when my voice isn't in good shape. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I think that I'm, you know, a lesser version of myself and I say, you know, just because I have a cold or I'm tired tonight doesn't mean I have any less ability to emote. It doesn't affect my ability to communicate the song. I can still communicate. Um, and that's what's first and foremost um, about it. So, you know, I would, I would hope that what you got when you, when you saw it was that, was that just a desire to communicate from one person to the other. I don't want really anything in between mm -hmm. um, that. Yeah. I just, I try and make it as direct as possible. Well, that, that, that could be one a definition of being a professional. <laughs> could be. Right, that you just do it and you ignore the, so the, you know, the voice in your head that's saying, uh, I'm not singing so well tonight, yeah. or I can't hear anything, or all that stuff, and you're still communicating, you're emoting. Mm -hmm. You're an emoticon yeah. at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm going to ask you a question that has something that d directly relates to my experiences uh, on stage. And one in particular is, I'm kind of known as being a guitar player, mm -hmm. and um, when people think of me, a lot of times they think of like kind of that loud rock and roll kind of shreddy kind of thing, which I don't identify as me, but I've done it a lot. Yeah. And, um, you know, in writing my autobiography, I look back and I realize the moments when it was the best, like when I tried to describe what it felt like to stand at the Whiskey A Go Go and play there in 1969, which was the height of all that, you know, mm -hmm. Sunset Strip and the birds and you know, all those people who played at the, at the whiskey, kind of uh, ground zero, I realized that when it got the best, everything actually disappeared mm -hmm. and got real quiet. Yeah. So where I was, was I was doing my thing, but I was feeling it more than hearing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I practiced enough, I knew what I wanted to come out from my key, essentially, yeah. but it there wasn't a, a whole lot of sound. It was yeah. quite silent. Mm -hmm. So does that happen to you when, when you're singing? Does that, well, what are your good, how would you describe the moments when you feel like, not you've transcended, but the experience has transcended? Yeah. Um, I think what you said, or what I think you were saying about sort of forgetting, mm -hmm. almost in a sense, detaching yourself um, from the sound that's coming from your instrument, what yeah. you're doing, um, are sort of the are sort of the best moments, um, one of them at least. Uh, you know, when you when I can be singing with a band and um, realize that, you know, most of the song went by and I didn't actually listen to myself the whole time. They're just yeah. such great moments. Yeah. You know, because I'll 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 turn around and I'll be like, damn. Bridget really played the bass on that song, you know? And like, I, and also like, there's a level of trust that I like, you know, I know that like I sang my part and that's fine. I'm like, I didn't need to like listen to every line and be like, oh, that was good, that was good, that one's not so good. Like, um, you know, to get to that moment where you're basically, you're just hearing the entire sound. You're not, you're not really listening to yourself anymore. And like, you know, I've, I've learned that in different ways. I learned it from um, shows where I, my monitors were terrible and I couldn't hear myself. 
Um, that was a, a great learning experience for me. You know, whenever musicians complain about bad sound, I'm like, well, I don't know, maybe, the, maybe you get something from it. Um, I remember finishing a concert where I could not hear myself the whole time, and like, that at some point I just, I just gave up. I was like, well, you know, something's coming out of my mouth. Um, and someone came up to me and they're like, oh, I think that was your best show. And I was like, really? And they were like, yeah, I've seen you guys a few times and that was one of your best shows I've ever seen. And I just remembered that. I was yeah. like, okay. <laughs> so that next time I don't hear myself, I'm not in a panic. I just t take it as like, this is, a, this is the experience tonight. Like try and like look at it as, as something that can be positive. I was like, well, you know what? I've you know, sung my whole life and I've trained for a lot of time. So I'm gonna just trust that I can sing in tune and I'm gonna just, you know, forget, forget about yeah, that yeah. Um, tonight. Um, yeah. Most excellent. Well, um, we had promised to open it up to uh, audience questions, okay. um, audience participation. So I'm going to do that now, and I just want to mention that uh, your sound and what you guys do in Lake Street Dive it is one, but when I look at you, you're four artists, mm -hmm. and that's very, I just have to say, that's very, very rare. I see a level of artistry that is individual, but combined, I'm sure, very mindfully, and I'm sure you guys love each other and work your asses off. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Yeah. So.